This is a painting of Rock Harbor Creek. And it's about an 8 by 16 And usually when I show up to a site, one of the first things I like to do is um, a quick sketch. Uh, it's really simple and uh, just trying to get in some basic shapes that show the tree lines and, and where the horizon line might be, uh, dividing the sky and the land. Um, and it's really, um, really pretty basic and it just sort of gives me a good footing as to where to begin the actual painting and as you see here some of those shapes put to paint on the canvas um, that I had from the sketch I love to take photographs when I'm on site uh, I'll always use those later at other times that's the painting a little further along with more shapes put in and then towards the end here I'm just always sort of trying to shift the light around and, and following what the day is doing sometimes changing a lot sometimes not um, here the, the clouds and the, and the uh, fog had broken and the light kept coming out more and more so I tried to emphasize that on the on the uh, water here as the tide was changing too. In thinking about inspiration and process behind these paintings, um, at this point really the only thing they all have in common is an experience I had out in the world, which sounds so obvious, but I love playing around with paintings and making paintings that I'm not really looking at very much to make. I don't, I used to paint from pretty exclusively from reference photos when I was figuring out how to do it. But now it's so fun to really have the reference material as a jumping off point and be able to play with the paint and let it become something different than the image I'm looking at. So I might not even have a photograph when I'm making a painting. I might not even have a sketch. I might just have a memory of something I experienced and then I build it from there. It seems to me sometimes that I should be able to just come in here and make a painting even without that kind of initial spark, that initial idea of something I experienced out in the world, but it does not work like that. Always it comes from something beautiful that I saw outside. The old artist Edward Hopper was once asked about his methods and he replied, I wasn't aware I had any. I think Hopper was exaggerating. <laughs> I do a lot of my paintings from memory and from imagination, so it helps me to, to plan ahead. Because of that, I do a lot of drawings, like you see here, this piece from the Pamert River. I like to start, let me show you my method here, uh, using vine charcoal on etching paper. I like to begin the painting with, or the drawing, by erasing out the darks. Uh, with an eraser and sometimes then adding dark darks, darker darks with the charcoal and charcoal itself. It's a great way to quickly find out where you're going with a composition. When it turns out really well, uh, I'll do a painting like this based on the large, uh, you know, the best of the uh, charcoal drawings. Before I paint, I do a lot of sketching. This way I can become familiar with the subject and work out some ideas about composition. This is how sketching usually looks with me, charcoal, and some paper. I like to use my iPad for sketching as well, and I use it very much the same way as I do charcoal and paper. Though at times things get a little bit strange, and sometimes even stranger. I like to begin paintings with colorful backgrounds like these. I can partly simulate my painting technique on my iPad by using layers. This way I can develop some color ideas and all kinds of whimsical thoughts. When painting with real paint, I sketch a figure onto a colorful background and apply layers and layers of paint in search 
of a resolution. And all those layers provide a depth and richness to the image. And my favorite thing to do is to go out and collect information and then put it together, mix and match, and then make my paintings here at home. Um, I paint at home. I don't have a studio. When I'm making my paintings, I'm usually, most of the time, I'm concerned more about conveying a message to the viewer. And the message is usually a mood or a tone. It's not um, necessarily a specific place. That always feels secondary to me. One of the ways I go about trying to convey a message, and I think this happens physically with the paint, is um, I really I work the surface a lot. And I, what I mean by working the surface is, yes, every time I approach a painting, I will try to finish a painting first time out. Now, that doesn't happen. So I'll try to plan ahead for the next day because I already have ideas about what I can do with the painting. Like this was a, uh, a small six by eight. It started off as a little sketch outside, painted it up. It was okay. Brought it home. I made some improvements to it, added some layers, added some glazes, intensified the colors, dulled down some of the values, got to a place where I was happy with it. Then I decided to change the format a little bit, take it into the square, make it bigger. And now I'm playing with this, and this is just about finished too. What I like about working the surface, and I haven't really scrubbed this one down yet or anything, and I'll take some sandpaper to it, right? So I'll paint it, it'll dry, I can scrub it with some sandpaper, reopen the surface, create new crevices and things. So the finished product has a story on the surface. So I love when you can see one of my paintings, and you can see like maybe the initial gesso or, you know, that first thin wash of paint, you know, and you can see that layer, and you can see the layer on top of it, and then the layer on top of that, and then where I scraped back into it, and then I added a thick palava paint, and then maybe we glaze thinly over that. And I think through that whole process, you know, we're not only left with an image, you know, but we're also left with a story. I've been an avid gardener for decades, and in gardening, layering is important. The same is true in painting, where layering brings in depth and texture. This is why I start with a warm underpainting, often red. I use oil paints and layer them with palette knives and brushes. I continually experiment, stepping back and spending time with the painting during its process. A consistent theme in much of my work has been flowers, often wildflowers or poppies in fields or more recently, flowers or birds floating in a mosaic background. I believe that my years of gardening finds its way into many of my compositions. My oil painting called Good Catch was painted on quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, a quality furniture grade plywood that I chose for its durability, its strength, its archival quality. I coat the surface with gesso the same gesso that would be used to prime an artist canvas. In this case, I transferred the drawing with the use of a grid. I start with a overall tone using a wash of raw umber, burnt sienna. Sometimes I'll add other colors. Once the tone is down, I'll start in with my drawing, starting with basic shapes, lines, directions, um, adding in dark areas and wiping away highlights. The drawing starts out quite rough and gets refined as I go along. When I feel like I'm satisfied with the tonal drawing that I have, I will start to mix the colors and apply the colors of the final painting. In this particular painting, I used a limited palette, a harmonious use of color range that I felt worked really well between the fisherman and his environment. My painting process begins with my reference photos from my visits to Cape Cod. Although I enjoy painting plein air, my happy place is actually my studio space. 
I love to just be surrounded by my works in progress and the little things that inspire me. Painting is an organic process for me. Uh, I often start without much of an idea of, of what I'm going to be painting. Sometimes I pick up old drawings that I've done. Uh, it's very easy to transfer these to the surface. I wet paper or the panel and then burnish them down. After that, I just add more lines on top. Uh, the different size figures in this example help me to create the composition, shape, and space. Then I use um, fluid acrylics on top of that uh, to create an underpainting. I really like the watercolor quality of that, the, um, the splashes, the, the runs. Um, it creates a really rich surface for me to react to. Um, I add some more color and start looking for and recognizing shapes and forms. At this point, this looks like it's becoming a group of uh, people to me. Um, I started with the old life drawings, but it really wasn't my intent to to paint those exact figures. Um, they were just a start. But once it dries, I begin to work with a mixture of oil paint and cold wax medium. Um, the wax adds a really nice uh, depth and texture to the paint. I'll start refining um, the idea of the painting. I look for a narrative and start working out the details. Um, here, I looked at how the figures were interacting with each other and I changed their scale and body position as needed to reach a compositional balance. It's a real give and take. Uh, I play with the light too. Uh, ultimately, I try to find a space that feels familiar and has a sense of the light and experiences of being on the outer cape. My process starts with an inspiration. For me, that is almost always a beautiful scene in nature. I study it and I look at the intricacies of colors and details and I take dozens of photos. So later, um, back in the studio, I will find the image or images that invoke that same feeling that I had when I was on site. And sometimes that's a combination of images that I'll fiddle with on my computer. When I've got what I want, I will transfer it to my working surface, uh, either free drawing or using grids. And sometimes I'm more meticulous than others. For example, um, I'm quite meticulous with tide pools because they're pretty complex, but I'm less meticulous with drawing in a wave because it doesn't take the same precision to read very realistically. So once that's done, I work with pastel uh, upper left to lower right because I'm right-handed and I don't want to smudge what I've already worked on. And I pretty much complete each section as I go, though I do go back from time to time and uh, change or shift values uh, to make everything work all together. I used to go straight to the color that I was seeing, but over the years, my, my style has evolved to where I'm excited by layering different colors to achieve a richer look. Because pastel pigments uh, hold their individuality on the surface in a unique way, I think they make a more realistic portrayal when, say, a green rock is layered with many different colors, so bits of them all show individually, yet combined together to give the overall impression of green. And if I'm successful, uh, then there comes a point when I feel like I'm actually in the scene that I'm painting, even though I'm sitting in the studio. And for me, that is what it is all about. It is about re recreating that feeling. Starts out pretty simple. I have an experience, whether it's going outside or meeting with people or observing the scene. I uh, try to soak in what that feels like to me and capture it in some kind of form. So I might start out with a plein air painting. Um, I might also add a bunch of photographs that I might take, maybe do some sketches. The important thing is really trying to remember the feeling that I have while I'm experiencing whatever it might be. Once I get back to my studio, I have a gesso uh, masonite panel that I'll work on. I'll do a highly detailed drawing, and then I'll block in some basic colors. So if it's a simple picture, I might just use uh, the, the version of the finished colors and just kind of loosely block them in so I know where I'm going and gets rid of all the white in the background. Or I might do a really detailed monochrome study using a white and a purple and a black uh, 
to really get all of the lights and darks and to define all the detail. Uh, once I have that established, then I do re a repainting of the entire piece. That final repainting is going to be nice and smooth. It's going to be have a smooth finish on it. The other things that I try to accomplish in my work is every single element of it will be painted slightly different. So I'll approach the sky differently than I might approach painting some rocks, for instance. I'll approach skin different than I might approach painting leaves. Okay, And the ultimate goal uh, for me is to present something to the viewer in which they can have that same experience that I had when I was there originally. Hello, Mary Alice here in the garden to gather images that will inspire me in the darker months ahead. My paintings will bear witness to the color, light, and texture that enrich our lives and bring us so much joy. Please take a moment to watch the birth of one of these paintings, wishing you and yours a slower, peaceful pace until the garden blooms again.